I always felt that hole in my life of I am still, even though I'm, even though I am driving revenue for our, for our business and for our family, it's not, I didn't feel like it was directly related to me in that way. And so, you know, it is a, a fun time for me to, to build this company and take that role in our, in our family's life again. and welcome to Crafted Entrepreneur. I'm pumped because my favorite person in the whole entire world is here with us today. And well, he's my favorite person today. Uh, His name is Chase Craft. (laughs) I've been married to him for 15 years. And I'm excited because we're going to talk business. We're going to talk life. And hopefully you can take some massive value away from this because we don't, I don't really claim to be an expert at anything but people. Like, I feel like I'm an expert on people. So we'll talk about that. Oh, you do. Okay. And just affirm me, affirm me in that. And we're going to talk just about scaling your business, communication with your team, and all of the things that you could go and implement into your life right now. So you're going to love today's episode. So welcome, Chase, to the show. So I like to point out, if you're listening into the podcast, you have to go check it out on YouTube because I'm like glam to the max. And Chase is in his fishing gear. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, are you going to go fish deep sea fishing or something? Maybe. Actually, no, I can't do deep sea fishing. Yeah. I get major seasick. I know. So, okay. Life update. We got a puppy. Good. I kind of just surprised him with it. Really. And it's so funny because you guys, I did a video. It's also been on the podcast, how I talked about how, if you have to ask your husband for money, like that's financial abuse. And I'm still going to stand on that hill because I just don't think that it's okay to have to ask for something. And even if you're bad with money, and so that's why your husband has, you know, put you on a leash. I just still feel like that's like, that's your, you need to go like work on your stuff and become more disciplined. So you don't have to like be treated like a child. Can I say something about this? Yes. (laughs) That's why I had you on the podcast. So I think that. Part of being in a marriage is having clear expectations, right? And the reason that you don't have to do that is because we have clear expectations on what our financial goals, right? So we're, well, we're headed on the same. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I think it's in a marriage, I think having clear expectations and, and, and having the financial dates and all those types of things allows each other the freedom to not have to run every single decision by one another because we're clear on each other's goals and we're clear on our financial goals together individually with our businesses and together in our, in our marriage and our relationship. Absolutely. And I think that's the thing that was missing from this reel that went viral and the TikTok, even though I'm glad it was missing because that's probably why it went viral (laughs) because it was so, I mean, look, the, 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 the whole purpose of social media and and how, if you want to go viral, viral like that, you have to be a little bit polar rising, even if it's polarizing to an extreme extent, right? Like that's the reason why I went right viral because it, it was so polarizing. But I found it interesting that anybody who had a problem with, with it was either a man, which I'm like, okay, maybe they're doing that to their wives or something or women who are like stay at home moms who I really truly have a heart for. And I think that's the thing. It's like, they need to like, just because you're a stay at home mom doesn't mean you're down here and he's up here because he's working. It's like, no, you are equal partners yeah. in this thing. And 100%. I think that's where it's like, don't put this guy on a pedestal just because he's making the money. Like you're managing the home and you guys are on the same level. And that's what like really, you know, I want, I want women to start believing in them because if you read Proverbs 31, the woman is investing and she's, she's being diligent to like take care of her home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we bought a puppy and we had talked about getting a puppy for a while and you didn't like you, when I finally picked him up from LAX, you're like, oh, it's real. Like he didn't believe that it was actually happening. Yeah. But I cried when they brought the puppy to our door at LAX, a a puppy nanny brought him. I started crying and I'm not like an animal person until now. Like I was just at a coffee shop and I was talking to somebody about their dog and I actually cared. And I was like, I've become (laughs) a dog person because of this puppy. His name's Bentley. And I've always been the dog person. You have. 
And like, I didn't think you were going to like him because he's a small dog. Like the biggest he'll get is 14 pounds. So he's a cavapoo and he's just so cuddly and he's like a little stinker right now because he's peeing and pooping everywhere. But he's so cute. I'm letting him lick my face. Like I was never that person <laughs> ever in a million years. And you're too. You're like, he texts me throughout the day when he's not home and he'll be like, how's my baby? And I'm like, I'm good. What are you talking about? <laughs> Remember the first time I brought home a dog? Or actually, not the first time I brought home a dog. The second time I brought home a dog. Yeah, I was pissed. Yeah. You, you took it for payment. And yeah. that was when we weren't making a lot of money or anything. Yeah. You did work. So he's like, at the end of the job. Okay, this is what made me mad. At the end of the job. So Chase has already done it. He's like, hey, man, I can't pay you, but I have a puppy to give you. And it was like a mutt. It was like not worth anything. I walked in the door and I had the, I had the dog inside of my jacket. I was and I so like, mad. she was sitting on the couch. That was back when we, in our first home. That was like 900 square feet. It's a little tiny thing. And I was in nursing school. Yeah. I and was I, not happy. I unzipped my jacket. This little puppy's head stuck out and she was so mad. I love that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. That just took me back to all the memories of, of those moments in our little tiny house, our humble, humble beginnings, babe. Yep. yep. Humble beginnings. Okay. So what I want to talk about right now is I really do believe that like, I'm good with people. Like I'm good at reading people. Like that's a gift that God has given me and you have this ability to just talk to any, I don't know, like you're a magnet for people in a way where like people just want to be around you. Would you agree? Yeah. And I think that's been really helpful as you built your business because people just want to spend time with you. Like you have, I feel like you have the Lord's favor over your life when it comes to friendships and relationships and people just wanting to, to do business with you. What are you wanting to say? No, no, I agree with you. I mean, I think, I, I think I'm just relatable for a lot of people because I, I am a bit of a chameleon in that way where I can adapt in any situation that I'm in. Like if we're, you know, hunting in the back country or I can be, you know, in a Mar Armani suit, you know, at a, at a networking event. Like Do you I, have an Armani suit? No, but I'm <laughs> just saying that <laughs> if I had one, I'd be wearing it. <laughs> No, I can adapt in every situation. So I'm, I can easily be relatable and find commonality with pretty much anybody. Like, okay. So I want to go back to why you are that way, because I think people don't know your story of when you were in junior high and you got bullied. And I think that's an important thing because I think that's why you are. I mean, I don't think I know that's why you are the way you are because you're very compassionate and like inclusive. If somebody's around, you're going to try to get them to feel welcome and, and happy. And I think you do that because you know what it's like to be on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would agree. <laughs> You're trying to get more out of him right now. No, I think, you know, the main thing is I'm, I am a man of many talents too. Like, are we just bragging on ourselves? No, no, no today? I'm just like, saying that like, I'm should we list all, all the talents. All the, okay. You he know, plays trumpet. He <laughs> plays guitar. He sings. He sounds like Morgan Wallen. Okay. <laughs> Uh, he uh, plays hockey. I mean, not like that. I mean that because I am, am eclectic in all things, <laughs> I think that I, you know, I, I relate to people well and I, and you know, and also I, I care about people, I guess, I guess it probably goes back to that. And, and also being, you know, a people pleaser, I like people to like me, you know, so we're going to break you of that. Yeah. And that, and that is, becomes a fault of mine, right? Because I, I tend to let people you know, either have too much access to me. Um, well, last night or... you were up. I mean, let's be real. You were up. It was one o'clock in the morning and you were talking to somebody like helping them. And I'm like, come to bed. Like we're done. Yeah. That can wait till tomorrow. And you're like, oh. I don't have a filter for that. Yeah. I have, and that's, some, I think a lot of people struggle with that because yeah. it's like, you know, I mean, how do you get to that point where you're okay with people not being okay with your boundaries. Like I have a hard, I mean, I am good with my boundaries. Would you say? Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm like, I'm done when I'm done. Sometimes. It makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm like, but these people have questions and they're texting oh, you and. Yeah, no, but it's like, I don't have to get back to you right away. Like I'm living my life and I will get back to you during business hours. Or if you're not a client of mine, I'm going to get back to you when I can. And I don't want to make anybody feel like they're not worthy of my time, but I need to put myself first because that's when I'm at my best. If I feel like I have to constantly put other people before me, then they're going to get crap. Yeah. 
they're going to get the crappy version of Kayla because I'm not filling myself up. And I think that's where the twist needs to happen. It's like you're kind of burning the candle at both ends right now. Mm -hmm. And that's eventually like it works in the beginning, but it is not like sustainable. Yeah, for sure. So how is it going to feel when somebody gets mad at you? You've already had that happen. Even in people pleasing mode, people have gotten mad at you. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can get through it. Yeah. I like to ask myself that, like, what's the worst case scenario if I set a boundary with somebody? Yeah. What's the worst case scenario? I mean, I guess it goes back to, I mean, rejection, lack mindset, stuff like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm bad at that, especially with clients, because I'm like, I feel like if I'm not super attentive and responding quickly, then they're going to either, you know, go somewhere else or I'm going to lose them as a client or, you know what I mean? I think it has helped me in business too. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like a catch 22 thing. As like, I think some people really appreciate the fact that I'm very attentive, you know, and I, and I respond quickly and I make a point of doing that. But I also, I also see that that's not going to be sustainable as I scale. Well, you, know you I mean? teach people how to treat you from the beginning. For so sure. if you're, you know what I mean? If you set it up in the beginning as you're going to have all access passed to me. And yeah. then in a year when you cannot maintain that. Yeah. Which realistically. Which actually, you know, I, 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 you know, my friend, um, Gerard actually pushed me on, on that Gerard Adams. Um, he said that it, it actually does a disservice in your perception to these higher level clients because people think that, oh, if you, if you have that much access, if they have that, that much access to the CEO, then how serious really are, is you know For, I mean? yes, so, so it is something that we did implement, like with my company, we implemented the fact that, you know, once I'm, once I close a client or once, you know, we have somebody onboarded as a new client then I'm, I'm passing that on to somebody else and I'm not, the one that's, you know, setting that up, onboarding, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that was something that I did. Yeah. You're starting from. to put systems exactly. in place and stuff exactly. like that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't care personally if the CEO is involved like, and I'm a client of yours. Like, I don't care to ever talk to you in business. Like that doesn't bother me. I just want the service provided. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like, and I think your ideal clients the same way. And I've implemented the right people in place to where they're actually probably better than me at, 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 at you know, the client relations aspect of things. 100%. You know? So that's important too. It's like, you know, having the right people around you is going to make you more successful. Well, okay. So people pleasing, how to combat it. It's number one. Like I go to the worst case scenario. Can I live past this worst case scenario? Usually the answer is yes. And then also second, it's like when you know who you are in Christ, like when you are solid in your identity, you're okay with man's rejection because man's rejection is God's protection. And that's truly what I believe. I feel like anytime somebody's rejected me, maybe I did do something wrong or whatever, but those people, if they couldn't have grace on me in that mistake I made, then they're not meant to be in my life. Yeah. Period. Okay, puppy, That's good. you're obsessed with the puppy. I am obsessed. You're working on your people pleasing. Yeah. And you've you've made a lot of really great partnerships, which is something I want to focus on because people think when they're trying to scale their business from seven to eight figures, that's where Chase is going right now. Okay. They get really focused on, okay, how did you get to seven figures? You got to seven figures on your own accord, usually. Like it's your sales, it's your network. Now to go from seven to eight, it's about partnerships. It's who can I collaborate with? Who can I bring on as an affiliate? Because that is a game changer. When you focus on who, not how, that is how you have a quantum leap from seven to eight. And that's really what's been happening is yep. partnerships. Yep. So talk about your affiliate program because there might be some people listening in right now. And I didn't think I was going to promote you in this way, but it's just happening naturally. There might be some people in the in the community that would be great affiliates. I mean, I know you don't accept everybody as an affiliate. Yeah. I mean, obviously we want the right partners. We want, you know, people that are committed to the same mission that we are committed to. But explain to people if this is their first podcast, let's just explain to them what you do really quick. So they have a clear understanding. I have a FinTech company that. Okay, but so for me, I, I still don't know what FinTech means. So can you break it down, please? Financial technology. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, Basically, basically, our company is is a uh, buy now pay later finance company for the coaching industry. So we offer financing for coaches, uh, courses, and, and programs. So anybody out there that is a coach or they're offering um, some sort of a, a service to their clients, and uh, typically high ticket um, offers is kind of what we're what we're looking for. Anything over a thousand dollar ticket price, 
um, we offer offer financing for for programs and services to your clients. Um, so you get you know you can get cash up front for those, and we take over all the payment management. Really, just providing a a full white glove uh, financial service for coaching industry. Mm-hmm. So you're looking for people to be affiliates that have a network of coaches. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we, you know, we, we're bringing on a lot of partnerships. I mean, that's, that's really our main marketing plan right now um, is partnering with the right affiliates that are going to drive coaches using our products. And so anybody that has a network of, of people that are offering, you know, coaching services or, or masterminds, events, online digital courses, you know, we work with all kinds of different industries, all kinds of different products and services, potentially working with a a company that's sending people in the space. Like it's, there's a, it's a wide gamut of companies that we work with, but really the, the, the affiliate partnerships that we're, that we're working with right now, and we're bringing in and making affiliates mostly have networks in, in the coaching industry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll put, make sure to link everything up in the show notes so people can reach out to you. Yeah. Right. Yep. So nice low residual income for people. That's uh, it's always nice just for making a connection and getting mailbox money. So that's, that's the way that we built the affiliate program out. We're just, you know, rewarding people on just a contact. We're in an interesting dynamic right now, I think, in our marriage and just in our life in general. We're celebrating 15 years married, Crazy. which is a act of God, an <laughs> act of God, that we are still married, okay? Because I like to point that out because I never want people to think, like, because people look at us from the outside and they see the highlight reel, but... I can't stress enough, like how many hard things we've gone through and I'm not going to go into details, but it's just like, well, we were married. I was 19. Right. Like, you know, how do you even know who you are as a 19 year old? You know what I mean? So it's, you know, the, the hard aspects of, of particularly our, our marriage was just both of us growing up as in adulthood. Like we didn't, you know, you, you find, you know, people say that you kind of find yourself in your twenties and, and, um, you know, when you're doing that with small children and with another person, it's, you know, it can be very challenging and difficult. And we both grown exponentially in those 15 years and in a multitude of different ways. And it's finding that balance of, of, you know, how do we grow together? We missed that balance many times. And that's, you know, what brought about a lot of hard aspects of our marriage, but we always joke around that we're, we're way too prideful to ever call it quits. <laughs> so that pride helped us in, in, in a lot of ways. And- no, I think that that is like, I'm thankful for that. Cause it's sometimes like your coping mechanisms can sometimes help you until they don't help you anymore. But I think pride did help us a lot, especially in our twenties, because so many people thought we weren't going to make it. Yeah. And then we're like, we're making it. Just we always joke around that. that like probably 90% of the people at our wedding when I was like, not even a 20 year old yet. We're going, this has got a short shelf life. (laughs) Uh, Oh man. But okay. So we're in this interesting dynamic because we're really the last like 10 years, maybe a little over 10 years. I've been the breadwinner at home and I've been proud to be that too. And now we're shifting. Like I never actually thought this could happen until I, I literally started praying for this because I was like, I chase, like he has this opportunity and what was given to me 12 years ago was an MLM opportunity. I took it and I ran with it and he su- supported me for the most part. Okay. We won't even go into detail, but if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know, it wasn't like all uh, rainbows and sunshine. Yeah. Maybe not the first few years, not the first few years, but then when I made a million dollars, you were like, okay, yeah. hi. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. I'll listen. I'll, I'll hang out. I'll, I'll, I'll do this party. Okay. So anyways, but he's in his opportunity zone right now. It's not even if it's, it's when he starts to like really out earn anything that I ever did. And I'm so proud of you, but it's this dynamic because I'm now shifting back to being able to just like watch you shine. And like, I'm thinking of how can I help him make sure he doesn't have to worry about anything anymore. Because really for the last like 10 years, you've taken care of so many of the little things. And now I'm going like, okay, I need to take care of that now. And I'm like, I'm thinking about how can I make his life easier so he doesn't have to stress about anything. And have you noticed that? Yeah, I have actually. See? Yeah. 
You didn't know I've been intentional about it. <laughs> See, but I think that that's something that if there's one thing that I've, I've really had to swallow my pride because you can have it all, but you can't have it all at the same time. And I think I've been craving being at home more. I, I want to work less. I, I want to pick and choose what I'm doing. I don't want to be available to anybody but my kids really like into a few small select executive clients that I know are going to hit eight figures in the next 12 months. Like those are the people plus my real estate stuff. Like that's all I really want to do and support you. Like I want to think about like all of the things I could do to help you. And I think it's God working and transforming my heart too, to be like, I don't care about the accolades. Like I don't care about any of that. I just care about like making sure you win right now. And I think that's a really important, like you need to know when it's your time. You need to know what season you're in, in your marriage, because it's not always going to be about you. Like he's not going to be able to come in right now and be like doting on me for our 15th anniversary. Like I'm for the first time ever planning our anniversary trip. No, but I'm serious. That's, that's the truth. Like, and it's the first time ever, like before that I'm like, you better, you better wine and dine me boy. And you better have everything planned. And now I'm like, no, like I want to surprise him and I want to spoil him for this. Like, and I'm really excited to like step into this new role. Like I feel like. Yeah, me too. (laughs) I mean, no, (laughs) not selfishly me too, but you know, it's it, you know, I had to go through this whatever, 10 years ago. Right. When, when, when I, you know, quit my, my job working for the family business and, and I was in the position that she was in for many years where I was, you know, the, the main breadwinner for a long time. And, and I was the one that had the accolades and had all the, the recognition within our industry and all that stuff. And, you know, that transition for me going into then supporting you and stepping away from that was really hard for me, you know? And so I think you're fortunate in the fact that you have done so much work on yourself where I hadn't at that right. moment. And so it was extra hard for me because I had to then, you know, figure out like, okay, why, why am I feeling this way? You know, why am I have such, such, you know, having such a hard time, you know, stepping aside and being your arm candy at that time. I'm pretty good looking arm candy, but, <laughs> yes. uh, but no, you know, I, uh, and I, and I hadn't gone through that personal work to, to set myself up to thrive and, and, that. And so, you know, where I feel like you, um, you know, in the last 15 years have been, have been putting in that work. And so it's going to hopefully be an easier transition for you. And I'm, and I'm excited to take that role back over, you know, as a man, that's what we're conditioned to be. We're conditioned to be the providers of, for our family. And so it was a hard transition for me. And obviously, you know, I wasn't just sitting around doing nothing. Like I was supporting you. I was, you know, we, we built mommy millionaire together and, and, you know, I was, I was a a very integral part of that, you know, assisting with my, my skill sets in, in, in that way. Um, so I wasn't just laying around doing nothing all day, but, um, but it was very, very much, you know, you were obviously the, the face, you were the, you know, you were the one getting all the accolades, all that stuff. And I was just the behind the scenes person, but I always felt that hole in my life of, I am still, even though I, even though I am driving revenue for our, for our business and for our family, it's not, I didn't feel like it was directly related to me in that way. And so, you know, it is a, a fun time for me to, to build this company and take that role in our, in our family's life again. So. Yay. Makes me happy. And I think the work that is required to know what season you're in is you really have to ask yourself the question, what do you really want? And that's exactly what my book is titled. Yay. What do you really want? And writing the book helped me figure out what I really wanted. And there's a way to get there because if you build your life based on your trauma from childhood, which is what I did. I mean, subconsciously, like I didn't know I became a millionaire in MLM subconsciously because I was, you know, abandoned by my dad as a young girl. And I had all these like self-worth issues, but that is what I did. Right. And then I built mommy millionaire from that same place because I only felt good when I was achieving. That was the only time I was happy. But after I healed that and really let God like take those strongholds out of my life. And I got clear on what is God's will for my life. It was much different than what little wounded Kayla had created. Am I grateful? I did all that. Absolutely. But now I could get, I'm very clear. Like I don't care to have 
any of that stuff anymore. I still like luxury and I still like bougie, but like the biggest thing for me is making sure that my kids are amazing human beings that know who they are in God and that they all are on the right track. And as your kids get older, believe it or not, like they need you more than when they were little. And so like, I don't know, I just get really excited to like step into that. I really want that. Plus I want all my assets to be cash flowing and like just go even deeper on the legacy part of the net worth and be extremely diligent on the investing strategy. Yeah. And that's, that's what I care about. It's so interesting to me. Like, you know, we, we obviously went through a season of our life of building businesses with small children, but I almost feel like now is even harder. Like our whole concept of mommy millionaire, right? Where we were teaching women, moms in particular, how to build businesses with a family. I feel like is, is now it's such a different dynamic than when you had small kids where, you know, they're just way more busy and you don't have the time in the day where, you know, kids are taking naps and all this kind of stuff, you (laughs) know, it's just like, it's a, you know, it's such a different dynamic and they need you more from an, an, an emotional standpoint, right? Like they don't need you know, when the kids are little and stuff, they need you more from a physical standpoint of like, you know, obviously attend, attending to them, making them food and, you know, raising your kids, discipline, all that kind of stuff. And now it's like the dynamic is so different now that the kids are older and, and they need us more from an emotional standpoint. Now, I, and this is why I'm so excited to really like build what I'm building is because I'm allowing you now to step into more of being there emotionally for the kids during this time of, you know, teenage years and all that stuff that, you know, our, our daughter needs you in a different way now and, and the boys need you in, in, a, in a different way. And so it's just so different, now, you know, mm-hmm. I'm so excited. Yeah. I mean, it's already happening. I feel like I've always given my best to my kids, but it, yeah, was, like, for sure. it was like burning the candle at the both ends yeah. this last couple, yeah. like two years, probably yeah. with just how busy they are. So it's an interesting thing. And when you get clear on what you really want, right, you start to get in God's will for your life. And I think there's a lot of blessings and favor when you're living in God's will. I don't think, I know, I mean, that's biblical that there is, that Chase is going to be like, where's it at in the Bible? It is Deuteronomy 28. Okay. So anyway, there's that happening, new dynamic that I just pray blessings over. And then for you, We've also had some interesting dynamics. Your team is growing like crazy. I mean, and you've always, I mean, how many people have you managed at once before? I mean, you've, you're. Yeah, like 30 probably. Yeah. So he, this is like his expertise. And I'm like, that's why I'm even like so excited because this is really where you shine is it's not about managing people. It's about leading people. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very different management than what I'm used to. It's funny. I was talking to one of my good friends is the president of a, of a a large brewing company. You know, he obviously manages people, he manages culture, all that kind of stuff. And I haven't been on that side of the management before. I've always been kind of like, you know, when I was working for my dad, I was a, you know, project manager, general manager. I wasn't like the guy, the CEO, I was doing more of the day-to-day management of people where now it's like, I'm having to learn how to step into that more of a CEO role where I'm like, thinking about, okay, company culture, I'm thinking about vision, I'm thinking about, you know, and, and I get caught sometimes in the weeds of, oh, I need to be, you know, managing this one employee that's where I'm having to start building layers of, of, of that. And it's just a different, a different okay. um, dynamic, but it's fun for me to, to learn all that, you know, and step into that, that new role. So what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned so far? as you build out your organization it's the same lesson that i've that i've always had with hiring people but it's like if you don't have the right team around you it makes it a thousand times harder you know and it's and it's worth investing and when you're when you're building a business and you're at the point where you you know need to bring on help and and you need to hire people it's worth taking the time taking the time and investing in the right people because it makes your life just so much easier You know, when you have, when you have the wrong people in place, it's harder, it's more um, stressful, balls get dropped, clients get, you know, upset and all that stuff. And it's like, when, if you just take the time to hire the right people, I'm always a a proponent of, of hiring slow and firing fast, right? Like 
I know within a couple of weeks, whether or not you're going to work out. But if you take the time and hire slow and, and bring on the right people, then those, those pains of, of that growth and that um, scaling your business and all that management that's involved with, with managing people becomes a lot easier. I mean, you recently just had to let somebody go and yep. it's, it's never easy no, to do that. Not. But my take on that is always like, you're doing them, you're doing you a service and you're also doing your, per, the person a service as well. That's getting fired because they're not shining in that role. Yeah. It's not meant for them. And typically when they're not shining they're you, it's usually because they're not happy in that role either. Mm -hmm. They're just you know, have a job to have a job and they're not really bought into the commission, bought into the culture, you know, bought into, you know, the impact that you're having as a company. If they're bought into those things that usually, it usually brings about excellence in their, in their work. And so you know, a lot of times, yeah, it sucks for them, but you're releasing them to go and, and do something that they would be more passionate about. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Okay. So your lesson is to take the time to really hire and invest in people too, because like yep. you recently just had to make a very big hire and it's not like cheap to hire good people who have experience and like, rather than bringing somebody on that's maybe cheaper, but you're going to have to teach them along the way. That's going to stall you in your growth game. Yep. So it's like hire people that already know what they're doing, who have a track record of success. Yes. You're going to have to pay for that. And knowing the right time, right? Mm. Like. You don't want to get the cart before the horse when you're not ready and you don't want to hire too late where your scalability of your business suffers because, you know, you didn't bring on that person at the right time. So that's where being CEO of your business, being able to get out of the weeds and, and, and see the business from like when people say all the time, don't work in your, you know, on your business work. Don't work, don't work in, in your, your business, business, work on it, right? Yeah. Like seeing it from that 30,000 foot view where you can really step back and go, okay, you know, what's my timing? What's, what's the process? What's the hire that I'm going to make at this point in my business? What's, you know what I mean? Where you can start to really map that out and have a clear vision where you're not just reacting all the time, I think is super helpful to set yourself up with the ability to scale quickly. You know, because a lot of times that, you know, like what we're experiencing right, right now, it was like literally overnight, like one week, I was just like, holy cow, I kept on, you know, I was up at, you know, my, my office starts in, in New York at, at, at um, 5 a.m. our my time. So I was up at 6 a.m., you know, till, and I was working till 7 p.m. at night. And I was just telling Kale, I'm like, I don't know what's happening right now, but there, the momentum is just exploded. And so, well, let's, but it's also like, it wasn't overnight. It's because you had been sowing seeds. I mean, you've been at this for three years. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Which is awesome to really see like, you know, there's, there was many times in this journey of, you know, the last three years of, of building this that I kept on telling Kayla, I'm like, gosh, I don't, I just don't know. Like, I don't know. I told him to quit. Yeah. I mean, you know, Kayla told me that it's, it's just not happening. You need to, you know, <laughs> throw the towel and everything. And so, but I knew in my soul, I'm like, no, this is, this is going to go. Like, I, I just know it. I obviously, you know, I'm very prideful. So throwing the towel into something, you know, that I spent so much blood, sweat and tears on was just not in, it but wasn't you, in the cards. You need to know when, to, when to hold them and when for to sure, hold them. For sure. For sure. But, and, and I, and I, you know, but I knew, I, I, I knew with all my being that like, this is something that that this industry needs. This is something I'm providing such a good service. Like I know that that momentum is right around the corner and I'm just like, I felt like just one but minute away from it many times. And then it just all of a sudden just boom. It okay. But I want to point out something though, because I don't know if you knew that I was doing this. I told him to stop doing it because I, I felt it in my spirit that like we were supposed to switch the dynamics in our relationship. Right. And he wasn't at that time able to even take a paycheck from the company because mm. it wasn't profitable to that point. And for me, I'm like, gosh, there's so many other things you could do, you know, like go start a coaching business, go do anything. Like you could really do anything you want to do, do something else. But when he was like, no, the doubt didn't get to him at all. My doubt didn't transfer to him. I started praying and I'm not joking. Like every morning and every night, I even had some times where I was like up at 3 a.m. and I didn't know why I was awake, but I just started praying. And I was just like, I'm just praying blessings over him that everything he touches prospers, that, you know, the people that come into his life are going to want to help him. They want to support him. And I just started like praying for the people to come. 
And like, I feel like it's not like from my prayers, but it's also like, you've got to have those people in your corner who are going to speak life over you. And even when they have their doubts, I was like, no, like once I saw that in his eyes, I was like, no, you can't doubt anymore. You can only speak what you want to be true for him. And if this is his dream, even if you don't get it, I don't care. You just speak life over him because God has something in this for him. So you need to just speak life. And I think that's really important for partners that are listening in right now to hear. Like, even if you don't get your partner's dream, you got to pray over it because God gives them the desires of their heart. And it's not for you to judge that desire. It's for you. Like if it's in alignment, like it's not out of God's will, right? Bad things or immoral, start praying for it. Start praying for their vision to come to life. Because remember in Mark two, like a man was healed because of his friend's faith. And that's your job as a partner is to be like, you know, having that limitless faith for them. And I think that's like a really beautiful place to be. So maybe everything's going good in your zone, right? In your lane, but what's happening in your partner's lane and how faithful are you to pray over them? And it was also, he wasn't just sitting back doing nothing. I mean, he was doing what is required to have an extremely amazing business. Yeah. I mean, you hear about those stories of entrepreneurs all the time that, you know, I think of like Dave Portnoy and Barstool Sports worked on his, you know, media, Barstool Barstool Sports Media for something like 12 years before he even took a paycheck and then, you know, recently sold it for whatever billion dollars. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I think if you just stay consistent and you have the people around you that, uh, you know, and and I even thought like, I felt like you're pressured for me, you know, the few a couple of times that you said, you know what, it's just not, this isn't it. You gotta, you gotta transition. You gotta pivot. I felt like too, that that was a test for me of like, okay, am I going to, do I really believe in what I'm doing? You know, Mm -hmm. if I really believe in this then I'm not going to, you know, feel pressured to, to believe that story that this is not going to work, you know? And so I think that was, you know, and it may have been a, it may have been a test that you subconsciously were testing to me to see how, you know, how real, really committed I was to, to this as well. But it was, it was definitely a test for me that do I believe in what I'm doing or not? Because if I'm, if I'm going to fall pressured to somebody telling me that this is not going to work or I'm not doing the right thing, or I need to, you know, pivot into something different. If I'm going to fall pressure to that, then I really don't believe in what I'm doing. And that was helpful for me, actually. You know, even the, you know, even though it sucks hearing from your spouse that like all this work that you've put in, you know, you just need to throw the towel in. It was, it was helpful for me to go, you know, sit back and go, okay, do I really believe in this? Yes. Okay. Then I'm, I'm going to keep pushing. Wow. I just had this like a total breakthrough moment right now because so many people, they give up on their dreams because they really aren't bought into the vision. Yeah. They, they did, they did it for the wrong reason. And yep. that's the thing about this company you didn't build it for money. Like we were fine. We could keep going at our pace and really. I mean, really, I started it just to. You solved the problem. Well, originally I started it just to, to solve a problem within our own business. Right. Right. Like I wanted to separate the payment aspect of, from mommy millionaire, put in, you know, a barrier there of, you know, chasing people for, for money. And so really it just, I didn't even start it as like, oh my God, this is a, amazing opportunity to release out into the world. It was like, I want to just separate the, you know, the payment part of our business into a third party. Right. And so I created this business just to manage mommy millionaires payment plans. Then once that happened, I'm like, Oh, wow, this, I'm, you know, sitting on something kind of cool here. I should, you know, make this available for, for everybody. I've also tried many other things before that I've given up on, you know, that haven't worked in the, initially, right? And and it was simply because I didn't, I didn't really, in my core, believe that it was something that was aligned uh, for me at the time. Like you that know? time you were going to be a cattle rancher. <laughs> Where's that? Do you have that hat on? No. No. Oh my gosh, you guys! He got a logo and everything created, Craft Ranch, and he bought a bunch of cattle. And did we, didn't you lease property somewhere to have them graze? No, I was trying to, but it was. So our house was. There's not a lot of money in the cattle business. I can tell you that. There is. There's not. No. Not unless we were going to have our own massive operation. But what else did you do? I was doing the social media, um, selling the social media stuff for a while and had a social media. You that know, went a, well. That it did. went well. It, did, it was but more. At of, the end of the day, it wasn't something that I was super passionate about. It was just like, hey, you know, here's another way for me to create income. 
do it. But at the end of the day, I didn't really truly believe in what I was selling. And so, it you know, people. so I didn't, so I didn't fight when, when things got hard in the business, I didn't fight to, to, to keep it going. I was kind of like, yeah, you know see, what, yep. you know, let's, let's just, let's just pivot into something different. Cause this is, you know, kind of getting a little bit you know, difficult. So. That's the point. You, you don't do things for money. People too often, they do things for money because they're in a scarcity mindset. When, if you just start, you know, doing what you're good at, okay, doing what you're good at and praying God's will over your life. It's crazy how God will, he doesn't want to make it hard for you. He will show you what he wants to do. And like this, it was just a problem in our life that he was going to go solve. He didn't know it was going to be a God idea that was going to turn into this huge thing. Right. But then he became committed to the vision of what he was going to create. And it solved a real problem in the world. And it's not a sexy business. It's not like, it's like so cool. Like I know you probably think it is. It's kind of cool. <gasps> <laughs> but you know, it's like my friend who owns a trash company. Huge. Okay. They sold for over a billion dollars. Like he, she's not passionate about trash. Okay. But what she was passionate about was like, really, she was given an inheritance and she wanted to put her money to work. And she saw this really unsexy business that was in waste management. Right. And she, what she's good at is handling people and like leading people to success and organizations and all this stuff. And she was able to build it into an over a billion dollar company and sell it, right? Because like she went and used her gifts and talents inside of this investment that she caught up in, right? So, but she saw the vision of what she was going to do. It was like, okay, I'm good at managing people. I can see my seed multiply over here and I'm going to be the best at this. And she was. So Really, like if you don't know what God wants you to do right now and you feel like you're just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying to do things just for money, you need to take a step back. And I know that's really hard to hear, especially when you're in scarcity, but scarcity is a spirit. And so you just need to take authority over that spirit and cast it away because God has an abundant life for you. And like, here's the thing that you got to do is you got to look back and say, okay, if God's going to take care of the birds of the air, He's going to make the flowers beautiful that nobody even like really thinks about, but God takes care of that. He's going to take care of you and you've got to step back and look and see, okay, what are the gifts God give, has given me? How can I give that out to the world? Because this is the law of the seed and the law of the harvest. The law of the seed says, you know, you've got to sow your seeds, your seeds are your time, money, your resources, the gifts and talents that God has given you. And you got to be intentional about, hey, like, what are those seeds that I have been given? And then pray about where God wants you to sow those seeds. And things are going to start clicking. Things are going to start coming together for you. But you got to take that intentional time to stop throwing spaghetti at the wall. Anything else you want to say, babe? Because any other no, words of wisdom? Getting ready to head into busy season again with the. Okay, so let's let's close on that. What is one tip? you want to give to people listening in right now who are headed into a busy season? Maybe they're like, okay, wow. You know, they're going to start really seeing what they're made of in a second. They're about to get squeezed. I think one of the things that I've really been kind of convicted of over, over the last couple of weeks is like, I really need to start taking care of myself better, mm -hmm. right? Like getting back into the gym, eating right. You know, I mean, we, we live a, f a pretty healthy lifestyle, but I can take that to the next level. And I think that's going to be something that's going to set me up for success when I have a busy season coming on is like, if I am not doing the things that I needed to be doing to take care of my health, then other things around me are going to suffer. So that's, that's one thing that I think, like, make sure that you have, you know, your personal house in order, right? Like, you know, whether it's your health or, you know, being intentional about spending time with your spouse and, and intentional. One thing that we just, you know, started doing is, is doing the, the daily walks, which has been awesome you know, having those intentional times where it's like, okay, we can be busy. We can have all the things, but we're going to, you know, be intentional about these things, right. And setting yourself up for success. That way you're not, you're not over your skis whenever life hits you crazy and that busy time comes and you don't have those consistent things in place to set yourself up for, you know, the life balance of, of, you know, you to be successful in, in those busy seasons you're just going to be, you're just going to be reacting to life at that point. And so I think that's something that we, that I have been 
either convicted of or something that I'm, you know, trying to work on, especially, you know, we, our busy season is like, not only is our business taking off, but we're getting ready to head into a busy season with the kids and, you know, just making sure that we have those things in place now before it actually, you know, gets really busy so that way we're not, we're not reacting. Mm, so good. Okay. So the challenge is for everybody to get their health, step up their game with, with <laughs> their health. Sure. I like it. Yeah. Well, no, I, I think, okay, please, this is going to, I'm going to go on a tangent really quick. Okay. And then we're going to end, but people get so freaking like they want to do the 75 hard challenge. Like Chase even asked me and it's like, no, I don't want to do a 75 hard challenge because I don't want to feel like crap about myself on day five when I can't do two workouts a day. Like that's like not ever going to happen for me right now in this season of my life but you've got to do something to challenge you. I like the concept of it. It's challenging to people, Yeah. but like most people fail at it because it's too much change at once. So commit to one change at a time. You've got to build up the muscle of becoming a disciplined person. So I know his is like, okay, stick to a diet. You got to work out twice a day. One has to be outside. You got to drink them out of water. I don't know what up. 10 what pages of reading. 10 book. pages, right? Yeah. So like you yeah. pick, pick one of those things. Say, okay, I'm going to read 10 pages every single day. Or I'm going to drink 100 ounces of water every single day for the next three months. Like commit to one thing. I promise you your confidence is going to go through the roof when you do it. And it's simple. Yeah. It's like, okay, if you can't do that, there's a stronghold over you and you need to have a deliverance prayer done, okay? Which I'm not saying anything against that, but I'm just saying like something's combating you, okay, spiritually. Let's pick one thing. I'm going to do, okay, here's what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to stretch every day. And I know that sounds so silly, but because I sit a lot and I'm walking a lot and we're, we're in the car a ton traveling, stretching is like everything because I have that degeneration in my lower lumbar spine. And so stretching is a huge deal for me with longevity and anti-aging. So I'm going to stretch every day. What are you going to do? Um, I think, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm wanting to get back into the gym on a regular day, or on a regular basis. So getting a workout in, moving my body every day. Cause it's, you know, do the daily walks count that we do? Yeah. I think they count. I think that's not like but no, but the is ideal that part situation. Of the okay. Yeah. But, but that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like you need daily to, movement, but then you're going to then see what's going to happen is you're going to do those daily walks and you're not going to feel proud of yourself. You're already <laughs> doing that. I mean, I play hockey three days a week. I like, yeah, but I think for I you, you really want to lift. Weights. I do. I do. I think that's what you're missing. Yeah. So could it be a goal around lifting weights? How often? A week are you gonna lift weights? I think a good goal for me is like four days a week. Oh, I was gonna even say three. Okay. okay. All right. You guys heard it here. Four days a week. There you go. Get I am going on. to, I already forgot what I said. I'm gonna stretch daily. So I want you to comment below what's your health challenge. It doesn't even have to be a health challenge. Just what's the one thing you're gonna to commit to doing over the next 30 days? Let's just commit to doing it for the next 30 days. And let's come back. We'll reconvene, see how everybody did. But I want you to comment below. If you're listening into the podcast right now, DM me, tell me what you're going to do or come and watch it on the YouTube show and give me your comments. Because I really, I like to know what y'all are doing. You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell Chase, I'll fill him in so go. he can play along with us. All right. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this crafting in chaos or is it called crafted in chaos or crafting in chaos? I think we used to call it crafting. Okay. Crafting in chaos. And, uh, if you loved it, share it out there with your friends, take a screenshot of it, tag both me and chase online. And remember we're linking up all of his stuff in the show notes. So if you want to be an affiliate, if you'd like to have him on your podcast, or if you'd like to use my abundant for your coaching programs, there's an application for that. So we'll yep. link everything up in the show notes. And I'm so glad that you spent an hour. I hope that your life is better because of it. 